when you're in the early stages of a relationship, but you're thinking about getting serious, there's some really important things to be thinking about. I know that when you're first dating somebody, bringing up money early on, it doesn't really feel natural. Um, it's easy to talk about a lot of other things as you get to know each other, but this somehow still stays on the taboo list. But I would encourage you to get a sense early on of what is important to your significant other financially before you decide to spend your lives together. If you do see this person in your life for a really long time, I think it would be great to get started on the right foot and to make money a safe topic right off the bat. And we all know, Stephanie, that money isn't just about money. It's about how you live your life. It's about saving for your dreams together and where you choose to spend in the, in the here and now. You want to understand if you both have the same vision for your future and then what it's going to take to get there financially. The most important thing is to understand your money numbers, things like your credit score, what your net worth is, salaries, debts, and then figure out how together you can motivate yourself to save for a future goal. And are your future dreams important enough to change how you spend and how you save today? So when you're moving in together, it can be a really exciting time. And this is a particularly good time to have the money talk, to really start off on the right foot. You're going to be sharing many common expenses, just daily expenses like groceries, utilities, it could be rent or mortgage. And we'd like to give you a few common ways that you can use to discuss with your partner how to share financial responsibilities for your new life together. I've got some good ideas, guys, so let's talk them through. One of the first things that you can try is to just go have these, which really means putting all of the expenses into one bucket and then dividing it in half. You have to, of course, agree on what expenses are shared, but when you divide it in half, it's pretty fair. The thing I would say here is that if you don't make equal amounts of income, dividing it in half may not be the perfect solution. So if that's the case, Stephanie, you can use the make more, pay more strategy. You might want to consider splitting costs according to how much you make. So if you make triple your partner's salary as an example, then it might make sense for you to pay the majority of bills. Under this model, Couples typically split bills proportionally based on what their income is. Jennifer, I think that's a great idea. I've also seen some circumstances where just one partner pays for all of the expenses, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Maybe one person has a significantly higher income. Maybe the, other, the significant other is still a student, or maybe is a stay-at-home parent, in which case there is one person that's sort of the head of the household financially, but that doesn't mean that you stop having shared conversations about money. And then the last strategy is what we're calling one for one. While every single month it might mean that you don't pay exactly the same amount as your partner, when the bills come, come through, you can decide who's going to pay for what on a monthly basis. So you may pay for utilities and groceries. Your partner may pay for cable and rent. And sometimes this can be less trustful because there's less coordination involved. I like that idea, Jennifer. I have another tip for you guys. If you're just moving in together and you're thinking about maybe going have these um, or just trying to start to share money you know, on a small basis, one thing I can recommend is to break out the expenses that are truly shared, things like your rent, your utilities, your groceries, and then to open up a joint checking account. And then you guys can transfer in money to that account and use your debit cards for those shared purchases. It's a really good starter way to share money, and it's a good trial run if you think you're going to be together long term. Remember that moving in together is more than, means more than splitting up just you know, the amount you pay in rent or groceries. Um, you're merging together belongings as well and potentially buying things together. I'd recommend keeping a record of everything. So if you buy something new, keep a receipt. If you brought something to the relationship, write it down on a list. That way you have a really clear picture of what each of you has brought to the table. As people move in together, I often get questions from clients about whether or not you should have a cohabitation agreement. It sounds a little bit scary, but I'm going to break it down for you. Living together is obviously about sharing more than just a toothpaste, and ultimately you may end up with some debt together, you may end up with some savings that you've accumulated together. So here's an example of why a cohabitation agreement is maybe something to think about. I had a client recently who was living with her boyfriend, and he unexpectedly lost his job, which we can understand has happened to a lot of people as the economy has changed in the past few years. Naturally, she continued to live with him, and to pay a lot of the expenses out of, you know, off, off of her budget and ultimately let him have a credit card on her line of credit so that he'd be able to run out, grab groceries, et cetera. Totally normal. In the long run, it didn't work out, which is really unfortunate. But what's more unfortunate is that in that time, because her boyfriend didn't have a source of income, all of his expenses were going on to her line of credit. And when they broke up, there was nothing in writing about who was going to pay for that debt. 
and it wasn't just her debt to pay, but she was in a pretty sticky situation. This is exactly what a cohabitation agreement can help you with. It helps you lay the groundwork in advance for how you would divide up things like debt or savings that you accumulate together. Regardless of the type of agreement you choose, there's some specific things that you always want to have. Basic personal information, where you are today, your financial strategy and the things you want to plan to divide up, and of course, your signatures. You can actually get a cohabitation agreement really easily and inexpensively. It's less than the cost of going out to dinner, so it shouldn't be overwhelming if you think you need one, and I'd recommend checking out LegalZoom.com to get started.